Thanks, Camilla. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good evening. Um, so this is the second conversation marking the exhibition at DLR Lexicon of On Steady Ground, Unsteady Ground. It's a collaborative exhibition by artists Cora Cummins and Saoirse Higgins, and they are awardees of the Visual Art Commission from Dunleary Rath Down County Council, which was funded by the Arts Council. And we're joined by Saoirse this evening. Um, Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just do a quick intro, Saoirse, um, sure. your bio, so Go for it. make me sound good. <laughs> There's no trouble making it sound good. Mm -hmm. As an artist and researcher from, from Dublin based between Dunleary and Papa Westray, she has a practice based PhD from Glasgow School of Art and an MA in Interactive Media from the Royal College of Art um, in collab collaboration with the Universidad de las Islas Valerias in Mallorca and an MSc in Media Arts and Sciences from MIT. Um, and Saoirse Higgins is interested in revealing the connections between our vision of the world we live in, our expectations for the future, and the tools we use to help us with this process. Her work is process driven, and she often collaborates with local experts and island communities. Saoirse has been marking and recording physical changes in the environment on the small island of Papa Westray. Um, also known as Pape, I believe. <laughs> Good evening, Saoirse, and you're joining us from West Cork. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I like to get around, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in Dublin, even though I live in Kerry. So That's yeah. kind of mad, isn't it? <laughs> it is. A little bit. We keep missing each other. Yeah. Um, so are, the night. <laughs> I'd just like to ask you, Saoirse, about Pape and, and your life mm. there. Um, yeah. Um, so I have an image that I'll share with you a few images um that because I guess you might want to have a look at what the island is like um so Pape is let me hang on a second let's get this together sure but it'd be nice to see yeah because sure. I'd never heard I'd never heard of Pape until till till now yeah. so can you, I have to ask that usual question can you see that everybody yes. um so this is the Orkney I yeah okay cool um so these are the orkney islands and uh if you look up at the top there uh there's papa westray um right up here if you can see my cursor um and then this is the mainland which is the main island they call it the mainland and uh papa westray is uh one mile wide and four miles long so it's a small island and it has a population of about 88 people um and the mainland has about twenty two thousand people so um yeah it's um about 12 minutes on the plane from uh kirkwall and two hours on the boat um so yeah uh it's well i'll just show you another image so this is from the plane coming into cafe and um, fish farm uh yeah. below and this is the view from just outside the house that I stay in, mid, mid house. Um, so that's uh, Southwick Beach looking onto the home of Pape. And uh, that water really is that green, um, uh, but it's not warm <laughs> uh, at all. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, it's very refreshing, put it that way. Um, and then this is another view here. So there's some amazing skies, obviously, um, on Pape, uh, like it's mostly sky and 45 meters uh, is on the highest point. This is uh, the Napa Hour on Pape, so it's got, uh, Orkney's absolutely stuffed full of archaeology, so if you're into archaeology it's a great place to go. Um, so this is uh, the oldest home in Europe. Um, I think Jonathan can talk about that a lot more, he's in the audience and he's the Pape Ranger on the island, so he takes people on tours to, and this is one of the places he takes them to. And it features um, in your work as well, I think. I've... Um, the Napa Hour doesn't, but okay. yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's got a lot of layers. Um, Orkney has a lot of layers way back um, uh, in archeology span and uh, Papua also. And um, this is the new pier um, in Quag, the Har, uh, plenty of that. Um, and this is the ferry coming in. Um, so, yeah, what else? How this is, so this, this is the last one. Uh, this is the Kelp Store, which is the Cultural and Heritage Centre on Pape. And um, 
so we set up a, a festival, an OI, OI festival is called, um, an annual festival of island culture. And uh, we held the festival in this lovely space, it used to be an old kelp store, uh, so drying kelp. And it was renovated and uh, it, we can hold workshops there and exhibitions and um, yeah, it's really nice. I think that's all i would show. Oh yeah, sorry, that's the inside of the kelp store. So this is some of the work um, I showed in about 2016 when I started my PhD, which was there. So that's one of the uh, flags and uh, some projection onto, you can get a better view in there. That's some of the school kids work. Um, uh, I'll leave it there. That's me sitting in the water, listening to uh, the surrounding sound. Um, but yeah, there you go. Stop sharing. And Sirsha, you said kelp, kelp store. Do do people yeah. use traditionally for for fertilizer then, or or what? what it's like kelp, as in like seaweed. Yeah. So yeah, so it used to be uh, part of that kind of production, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then was renovated. Can't remember the year, but renovated. When I arrived, it was just had opened um, as a as a cultural and heritage center. So, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so that's where I've been based um, since the beginning of my PhD, which is started in twenty sixteen, um, and now I'm kind of part time there, half and half. Um, so yeah, yeah. It it seems it's. I thought I lived remotely, living in in Kerry on the Bear Peninsula, but it's a whole other world. And well, yeah, I suppose remote is very. Um, subjective isn't it like where you are and what you think is remote is uh kind of you know depends so like when you're there it doesn't feel remote because you're you've got the community there and you've got everything you need and um you know people come and go to the mainland all the time to get there you know go to the dentist and go to the schools and you know all of that kind of thing so um you know, Dublin is remote from that for that from them from their perspective. <laughs> yeah, so. I understand that because uh, I I can identify with it from you know. But I I always found the transition sometimes quite difficult. Um, as a child, I had difficulty adapting um, because I think if you live in such proximity to nature, um, it does definitely do something to to you, um, and it makes you it just kind of wires you differently somehow, I think. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think I, I'm coming from, I'm coming from a city really, you know, so the transition for me was, it was, it was, it was hard. Like I wasn't a natural, um, you know, I didn't get to the island and then suddenly, you know, connect and go, yay, I'm like completely okay. I struggled with the, um, you know, the differences in, especially a small community, like kind of understanding the kind of, um, you know, the kind of way that works. Um, but I, I found that really, like, that was fascinating for me, you know. So I was, you know, I was very interested in, you know, finding out more and being, you know, kind of um, learning about how to be there. Um, and then I found, like yourself, I mean, I found um, the closeness to nature and very, very, um, good for me you know um i lived in new zealand uh, a good while ago a long time ago and uh, that was one thing that i really found fantastic about new zealand is this kind of like like nature is very strong um you know in in your life mm. there and same on pape so um yeah so all of my all of my work was really about that you know about the kind of connection with the anthropocene um which is you know the kind of relationship between humans and nature and um, how we've not been very kind to the planet um, and you know the kind of how we're going to grapple with that um, so yeah so when I was in Pape I was kind of looking at that and that was what my PhD was about it was about um, you know our engagement with this rela relationship and how do we navigate that and particularly how do islanders yeah deal with that because I was just going to say that they have it's a different perspective that from an from an obviously the island perspective um and uh yeah I'd love to hear you t talk a little bit about that um yeah I mean I think I think uh you know I went to the this idea that like obviously you know islanders 
deal with the environment very much so in their daily lives and it affects them uh, very directly you know so you know when the weather is not great and the plane doesn't go then you know you know things don't get delivered to the island and you know things like that you know so I mean we're kind of experiencing it a little bit now in some ways in the, in the global sense where we're kind of things like maybe we won't have wheat and maybe we will have a bread shortage you know mm -hmm. um you know that kind of you know so so I'm very interested in this kind of you know things that happen locally and things that happen globally and how these affect each other and how we're all interconnected and um you know on on the island islanders are very kind of at least you know my experience of being there as well as that kind of we we have a very direct connection with kind of solving problems and fixing things and being able to kind of be resilient mm -hmm. um, so like in the this is this might be a bit nerdy but in the in the, this latest report and the you know for the climate crisis the ipcc report you know that kind of talks about the, the how how uh, we what our status is with climate the climate crisis they're talking about resilience in, in a not just to bounce back but just to kind of uh be able to transform things you know more positive i guess so yeah i, I got that it's not kind of like against adversity it's like we can do something about it you know so um yeah having just, having looked at your work and and researched it um that's the sense i get from it is that it's it isn't hopeless and there is a sense of of, of that it can get better uh, i get that very much from from your work yeah Mm. it's been really interesting um actually i i think maybe it would be nice to talk about um because we don't we, we don't have that much time um just That's the time piece already piece of, in in the actual in the exhibition um i was really taken by by the film um survival tools of the anthropocene and it's 40 it's about 40 minutes long i think or something like that yeah i mean it's maybe 50 something minutes yeah I mean it it was intended I think I was saying it to you like it was intended to kind of be you were able to dip into it and out again you know kind of uh and basically come into it at, at any point um so they're kind of vignettes and I'm I'm talking about Margaret Tate but my I'm very interested in Margaret Tate she was an Orkney filmmaker um in the 60s um um and she uh, talked about pools of time. And I was thinking about the film, I was thinking that's kind of what it is, is these pools of time over uh, years. Like the, 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 some of these time lapses that you see in the film are over quite a stretch of time. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought that was a good description of them, you know, cause I'm interested in this time element, you know, of real time and this, huge geological time which is like uh imp like so hard for us to grasp you know as humans we're we're not built for that you know um so but that's what the climate crisis is all about these kind of things that we can't see that are actually changing and mm -hmm. over long periods of time that we're our dna isn't really designed for so um yeah so that film is is there's lots of um, time lapses and, uh, you know, looking at this, um, three different ways of looking at things. So there's like the real time, a kind of local uh, stuff, the more relational time, which is kind of looking outward, um, comparing, contrasting. And then there's this bigger picture uh, as Braudel, who's this historian that was all about the bigger picture, long-term effects in history. So he called it the long durée, the kind of longer uh, world look at things. So, um, so yeah, so I was kind of trying to get at that. So, um, so some of the film has, uh, for example, uh, some of the Islanders in it and the Islanders are, uh, we were doing a project 
uh, building sea defence walls called Cassie walls um, along a stretch of the island and uh, this is kind of a traditional way of um, do, building those walls and we were uh, interested in kind of um, passing those skills on to the younger generations and uh, so um, so there's a bit there's time lapse from that and there's time lapse from kind of um, uh, um, planting lime grass, um, which is uh, supposed to kind of um, help with, um, you know, the coastal kind of defense. Um, so there's kind of lots of lots of stuff about, you know, sea levels rising and that kind of effect that has on the island. And then in between there's um, there's words that are kind of what I'm trying to get out there is kind of words to kind of build a lexicon of um, or a kind of a dictionary of uh, terms that talk about this change that is going on and uh, you know the ebb and the flow and the defense and the um, resistance and that kind of thing. So I kind of in my head I'm thinking about making some kind of book about that. Um, you yeah, know. I was just going to ask about the language aspect of it, actually. Yeah, it, yeah. It was to, I, I think there are 12 chapters. I, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it is kind of designed like a book um, mm -hmm. or like like uh, Margaret Tate would say, uh, vignettes or pools of time. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we're all about like, when you name something, you kind of pay more attention to it, obviously. So like we have that with storms, like storms are being named. I mean, I'm not really I'm like you know before we had storms and we they just they passed through and that was it and we were like on to the next one and yeah. now we're all about naming them and actually I, I just read recently that um california are thinking about naming the heat waves to kind of raise the consciousness of and be aware of like those as a as a climate crisis so because lang language is important um to kind of define and talk about and magnify things you know so um, so yeah, so that's the film, and then the other film, which is the one on the screen, is uh, I called it CB lapse, which is kind of about it's not time lapse, it's real time. It's about um, real time in inverted commas. Obviously, it's a recording. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if I yeah, that would be nice if it had been a, a a camera on the island and a real time. You know, um, what I was getting at there was this this kind of like just the sea in its tranquility looking out but also it's recorded from the um the uh, quarry and the quarry is where all the stone comes from from for to build the houses on the island and so when you look across then to the flag the flag has the stone with the um benchmark on yeah. it which measures the uh, sea level rising so they're kind of connected in that way and then that is also connected to Cora's mountain monument which is rock so uh, kind of looking for points that are kind of magnifying the change around. So everything's swirling. I'm imagining like everything's swirling yeah. around it and this rock is in the middle that's kind of solid and doesn't change, you know, and is uh, kind of uh, has a heavy weight of like all of that change. And language is the same. So it kind of markers points in time, you know, so. So yeah, everything relates and, and connects and yeah. <sighs> Sure does. <laughs> and so, so does your work in in the in you know the exhibition that you had at the Pier Arts um prior yeah. to to this exhibition and all your work with on the National Islands Plan. Um, oh yes, that, yes. that also it seems everything flows in, into each other. So yeah, I mean I think all of us artists that we do this a lot, don't we? We kind of have a be in our bonnet about something we're like, or we have like a. Uh, kind of theme or something that we're very interested in and you know it kind of flows through the work you know in different formats and different ways so yeah the Pure Arts uh, exhibition was uh, I got this um, 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 award to be embedded artist with the uh, Scottish Government uh, National Island Plan team so the National um, the Island Plan is um, you know basically what they're trying to do is uh, put islanders into policy and kind of make sure that islanders, islanders are heard when things affect them, you know, so it's really good, you know, it's a, it's a good 
uh, thing to happen. And um, that happened in 2019. So um, in the summer, I went around with the consultation team and I went to, they went to a, an insane amount of islands. I went to about 41 islands um, in a very short space of time and went around and did consultations on all of the islands in different uh, locations. So we went from, I went to about 12 of them actually. So we went from or Orkney to the uh, to the Hebrides, over to Lewis and Uist and all the way down. I'd never been there. And uh, it's very similar to the West of Ireland. It's quite, uh, like it's got the Gaelic and, you know, that kind of influence, whereas Orkney is very uh, Norse, you know, it's, it's, it's very different. So went there and then I went up to Shetland and Shetland is amazingly, it's very different to Orkney and you would expect it to be quite similar, a bit like UK and Ireland, but it is quite like Iceland. It's got like coloured houses and kind of, you know, just it's got a different vibe altogether. And, um, and, then, and then I came back around to Orkney. So what I did was I followed them, the team and then I made kind of uh, made work kind of under reaction to or, you know, kind of. Um, had to think about it afterwards and built this uh, work around of what I thought about when I met the islanders and stuff like that. So I uh, decided that um, I kind of worked with Ordnance Survey um, and I decided that I'd wanted to measure the geographic centre point of each island and interest and worked with the Ordnance Survey guys, Paul Naylor in particular, um, Chris Mees, and built a map and they calculated the geographic centre point of each island uh, of all the islands that they went to in the consultations and uh, put it on the map. And then we took out the UK altogether, the mainland. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, um, an image of that, might not have time to show it, but, and then we um, put in all of the lines towards the geographic center. So the geographic center point was, just, he described as if you put a pin down and you put the island on the top of the pin, it's where the island would balance on right. the pin. So, um, What's interesting about that is uh, some of those center points might be in water or they might be up a mountain. And I thought that was very interesting in terms of like physical map to physical space, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I love maps. So, um, so anyway, um, I did that. And then I, my plan was I made flags with the center points um, on the flags and was all ready to go around the islands and to kind of gather, especially younger folk, and to go to these center points and, and plant the flag and uh, take some photographs. But COVID happened. So um, I did Pape. Pape was obviously I was there. So I took Jesse, who's a young islander who's very climate conscious and uh, very interested in that. And uh, she's 16 year old. And so we went to the center point on Pape and planted our flag and uh, took a photograph. And um, then she became part of the film that I made as well, which was, um, I actually made a 360 version of the film, but because of COVID, nobody could put on the VR headsets. Right. Um, but I'd like to do more of that, actually. That I think, you know, that would be really interesting because it's quite nice to kind of get yourself immersed in the landscape and look around. I mean, I don't know whether anybody's seen the Bjork um, films, but they, she had some 360, which was pretty amazing with Iceland and all the landscape there. Yeah. I was just going to say that brings us to ice nicely to Iceland. <laughs> yeah, Iceland. What a great place. Yeah. yeah. So back backtracking on uh, for Iceland. Um, I had gone with the Icelandic Glaciological Society uh, on their annual expedition. And what they do is they go. First of all, the society is a mixture of scientists and volunteers. So what they do is every year they go and they measure uh, the changes in the glaciers. Um, so there's groups of them doing different glaciers. So the one I was doing was the Myrdalsjökull glacier, which is quite near Reykjavik. And um, I was with um, uh, particularly this uh, um, glaciologist called Odur Otur uh, Sigurdsson. Now he's, he's retired now, but he's an amazing man. And he's taken photographs of basically all the glaciers in Iceland from the 1960s onwards. And he's taken them with this stereoscopic kind of uh, camera. And he has a little viewer and you can view them in slides. And he has this collection that's amazing um, in Iceland of those uh, glaciers. So anyway, what we did was um, we built the islanders on Pape, all of us together built this Pape probe which was like a, um, a kind of um, something like you'd send out to space. 
uh, that was the kind of idea. So we had lots of experiments that uh, were supposed to, the idea was to measure this kind of the seesaw effect of sea levels rising and glaciers melting and kind of to understand what glaciers do and what ice does. Because obviously in Orkney, it's all stone. There's no experience of ice and, you know, um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting, the differences in materials as well. So. So we went, we actually deployed the glass, uh, deployed the glass, de deployed the Pape probe on the Myrdalsjoko glacier um, with the help of, uh, well, not with the help, but I mean, we were talking to the, uh, the society in Odor about this um, project. And um, we also took, we had a big pumice stone that had been washed up on the shore on Pape and we took it back because it had, come from a volcano in Iceland, we reckoned. So right. we brought it back to him and he still has it actually. And uh, we also brought some oyster shells, I think that were from the Nap of Hauer, um, you know, the oldest home, the Neolithic home. So we brought that back as well and put it into the glacier. And we were thinking, well, I wonder where it'll end up, you know, in the future, you know, maybe it'll come back to Orkney, who knows. So, yeah, so that was the Iceland thing. I mean, Iceland is amazing. It's, you know, what's incredible about the environment there is it's alive. So you're putting, you're standing on something that's like bubbling and yeah. steaming. And um, so it's a great place to work. Um, how, how long were you there, Saoirse? How um, well, I've been there, I did a couple of residencies there. So I did a residency in Reykjavik and I also did one on the no very north of Iceland in uh, Olafsfjordr. Um, and that was in April. So it was kind of on the cusp of the weather. It was still snowing and um, still amazing. I saw the aurora there, amazing. Um, mm. But you get the aurora in Pape also, you know, you step outside the door and it's, there it is, you know, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was I was there for that, and then also for this expedition. Um, so I've been there quite a few times, you know. Um, it's an amazing place to visit. I recommend it uh, a lot. Um, I'm just wondering whether anybody would like to um, perhaps ask a few questions. Um, if you if you'd like to put them in the chat box, please do. Um, I forgot to say that at the beginning. I'll just show uh, you, like, while you're doing that, I'll just show you. Uh, um, share screen or or we could um raise hands or if, if anyone would like to speak that's fine too god damn it i just stopped sharing by that accent sorry that's okay <laughs> <laughs> okay this is what i want to do so that's the map there's a question okay that's the map without the the you the center uh this is the the uh island 40 island nation map limited edition and then that's from the film the 360 film I was telling you about and I, I sort of stopped telling you about it but it was uh, there was a narration uh, by Jesse who was reading Murdoch Mackenzie who was a hydrographer who mapped all around Orkney and kind of made it much safer for sailors to navigate around uh, the island so um, I liked him because he was very kind of of the people and very much you know kind of uh, measuring from the land to the sea and uh, he also did a bit of the Hebrides and a bit of Ireland as well so um, she was reading some of his um, treaties maritime treaties so uh, I showed that film in Pure Arts as well um, this is this is a Pure Arts this is the flag and then this uh, boy is uh, the, the the mathematical formula is to measure the geographic center point of um, the island and the boy was made by Jonathan Ford who's an artist and is here this evening and uh, we put the flags and the kind of island plan inside it and the idea was to to be able to transport it around the islands that's the flag that's uh, that's the Pape probe just testing at the beginning um, on the beach in Pape so that's one of the uh, young islanders and uh, they're just testing it with stones. Oh, Sirsha. Yep. Could I, could I just quickly ask ask um Moran yeah. has asked a question and Wilma has also. So um I sure. don't know if it, um Moran would like to know um could you talk a bit about uh, how it was to to do printing with Cora and the exchange in that sense? Um, oh, I didn't do any printing. Um, so I 
I don't know how, I, I, I'm absolutely amazed at the process. It's so, I, I've tried printing in strong mess, actually, I had a go at it. And uh, what I love about it is so, so messy compared to digital, you know, so, and, and quite long time and time consuming you know but uh, you know my process our process Mika you do film like it is time consuming also but it's just a different type of time consuming but um so yeah uh but like we did talk a lot about you know things like the aurora and and um you know shifting ground and things like that so kind of chorus that came out in her printmaking our conversations you know about that so um yeah um but no I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a uh, printmaker so my background is kind of more video and sound and interactive work with electronics and stuff like that that way back as well so. and, and the flags are also digital I, I'm oh yeah sorry. actually yeah the flags are digital I printed them in the Glasgow School of Art um, in their, their textile department and um, yeah the, even the colour on the flags is kind of printed on um, mm -hmm. to the cotton um, so yeah I forgot there's that. There's a nice question from Wilma as well. She, she's on a residency in the Faroe Islands and asks if you've ever been there um, and says it's similar to Iceland without the volcanic effects. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, I would love to go to the Faroe Islands. I would. I think what's interesting about the Faroe Islands, don't they have like a really good, they have their own kind of systems of doing things, really proactive and kind of um, organizing themselves in terms of like, I know Wi-Fi and things like that. I remember seeing a sheep cam from there. Like following, you should do that, Mika. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Put a camera on Put a camera on a sheep. <laughs> it has crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're pretty. I'd love to go and visit. Um, sounds fascinating to be there as an artist. I imagine. Mm. Um, any anybody any no that no other questions so far. Um. Just an observation about your work that I had that that you deal with the social and the scientific um, and it's playful sometimes and funny, but it's extremely serious as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's a nice way. Uh, you know, that's it's nice. Interesting when you have an outside view of what you're doing, isn't it? Because you don't always think about those things. But I mean, I'm interested in that scientist perspective versus community and you know that you know who calls themselves an expert and you know oftentimes when they call it like expert by experience like local farmers know lots about the environment they work with it all the time and you know I did uh, talk a lot with like the uh, some local uh, like Keith Johnson who collected weather has collected weather da data for years and years and years and you know has lots of expertise in that and sends in the data to the um, Met Office and uh, you know just kind of looking at well my idea of like kind of looking at a, a collection of us like both scientists and community getting together and solving things together as opposed to from the top down you know this kind of vertical power thing um so yeah, yeah that, i think that was very evident from your involvement in the in the national islands plan that your, your contribution um to your work in in your, you know culturally that it's so important to the people there yeah um, they they value it so much so, um that was you know just yeah i mean there. i guess they had the they had the uh, what's the word wherewithal to invite an artist into the process uh, i mean i think it was difficult for them to have me there because they needed to get this consultation done and in a, in a way they invited me in and at the same time they kind of went oh god we don't want you to rock the boat at all you know and I was like well you know I can't be doing that really I have to like ask people questions and talk to them about yeah. how they feel so um it was a delicate process it was not easy you know but it isn't easy to collaborate you know in general it's great it's I'm sure good. yeah I'm sure it was challenging on many many levels yeah um, yeah it was but it was interesting time restraints and and everything so could you give us an idea of how it is on Pape in the winter months, presumably very different to summer when tourists come? Yeah, I mean, the good thing about the winter in, um, you know, in islands in general, or I guess, you know, in places that tourists come in the summer is that people get a chance to, uh, you know, 
breathe in the in the winter they you know it is a good time to actually talk to uh well during my phd to kind of interview people and things like that it's very it's, it's the time it's when they have the time to do this, those sorts of things but um i mean for me on path a it was i found that really hard because the light there's no it's very dark and you know the in the summer it's amazing because the light is just you know uh you know constant practically and i absolutely love that you know um um so that's difficult um but and then the weather is you know pretty much like not the best <laughs> um, uh, so things get cancelled quite a lot and things like that but i mean the the, the the good side of that is that the sky is amazing and I took lots of time lapse of the stars and uh, the aurora and things like that in the winter and you know being out at night with the sky the size of the sky you know just completely wraps around you and uh, it's like being in the middle of a like a snow globe you know and um, that's amazing and you know so that's kind of interesting about it. Um, the tourists are, I guess this is going to be the first year the tourists are back after the pandemic as well. And then we have an extra interesting thing. We have Amy Liptrot, um is her uh, book, The Outrun, is going to be shot um, on in, in Orkney and in Papa, Papa Westre in particular um, this summer. So um, that's going to be interesting to see what happens after that in terms of tourism. Um, but it's busy. It's a busy place um, in, the, in the summer. Um, that'll have a big impact, I expect. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine so. Um, and you know the uh, the I have to say this, like the act, the main actress is going to be Saoirse Ronan, a woman after my own name. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that's going to be good. My new best friend. So, um, yeah. It, does that answer your question? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want to know a little bit more about the, um, you know, we have one shop, um, you know, and the pub is on a Saturday night. Um, and then people, there are six, six farmers on the island um, and cattle and sheep, Mika. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and, you know, so it's, it's very much about the land. Uh, it's, it's kind of surprising. I didn't expect that, but it is more about the land and the sea in terms of like, making a living um and then we have douglas who's the local fisherman and creel fisher um creel fisherman and um yeah so um do the island people themselves travel yes um yeah i mean we're tra traveling backwards and forwards to the mainland all the time um you know there's two flights or three flights a day and uh you know, so that's a that's constant backwards and forwards and islanders in general that do that, you know. Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Go and uh, go to Instagram to uh, yeah. Jonathan's Pathway Ranger and you'll get lots of nice images of Pape and things that are going on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. But yeah, I mean, uh, the plane is an eight seater plane that um, goes between the islands and um, the ferry is, you know, takes it, it's not roll on or off. It takes the, like it took my car when I went up there first it winched it off and placed it on the island. And uh, so that was pretty amazing. Um, yeah. So what else have I been doing? Um, I, I, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Oh, no, it's it's great. Um, there's we're kind of up time now, are we? Yeah, we are. But <laughs> so much we, we could still talk about. Um, hmm. But I need to have a gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Sounds like... Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, we are kind of on time. Yeah, someone says, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. Idea. Great. No, that was really interesting, Saoirse. Thank you. Well, I hope it was. Pleasure. Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's it's been a pleasure to to learn about your work and also Cora's work and um, yeah, it's been great. Know. Yeah, it's been really great with Cora and uh, like the two along because of the pandemic and stuff like that in terms of showing the work. But um, yeah, it's been really a nice opportunity. Um, the the and, exhibition ends yeah. on Friday, I think. So a uh, Sunday, I think. Oh, Sunday. Um, okay. Yeah. So everybody get get there quick. <laughs> um, it'd be nice to see you. 
and uh, I'll be yeah so I'm back up and I'm back in Dublin on Saturday so I'll probably be in I'll probably call into the show on Sunday so if, um, if anybody's around um, so, yeah some uh, information being shared there just oh great yes for right. everybody I think so yeah yeah Thanks very much. Time. yeah great thank you everybody for thank you taking the time <laughs> all right um thanks a million hey, wendy <laughs> it's nice to see all the uh chat people coming in um, yeah it is <laughs> yeah so come visit Pape. <laughs> I'm sorry about my fire. I think my fire made a bit of noise during our talk. So no, haven't oh, really. yeah. Anyway, listen, Mika, thanks. It was, it was so good to talk to you as well. It's very nice to talk artist to artist as well. There's my sister. Yay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's a lovely, that's really nice opportunity as well to kind of chat because you're a filmmaker as well. So um and hopefully yeah. we'll have more chats. Yeah, that'd be great. You have to come visit too. Um oh absolutely i i will <laughs> um so yeah so thanks everybody and uh see you soon <laughs>